In this video, I'll introduce you to the new Angular standalone components and how it helps in improving your development experience and code base. Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and welcome back to my channel. Angular 14 has brought about another significant change to the framework and that is introducing standalone components. So what are standalone components? Put simply, standalone components are components which don't need to be declared in an ng module. Now currently, whenever we create a component in Angular, we have to declare it in an ng module and also specify its dependencies here in the imports. Standalone components change all that and effectively remove the need for us to have ng modules. But you will ask, why remove ng modules at all? Well, ng modules have always been a difficult concept to grasp for beginners to the framework. There is this extra layer of code, as you can see, which is strictly not needed. Currently, they are needed to declare components. Otherwise, the components don't work. And this often causes confusion for beginners. Now, because of this extra layer of code, there's more context switching during development because to add dependencies or remove dependencies for a component, you need to access the module first. Lastly though, if you love ng modules and it works for you, it's good for you. Now keep at it and build awesome apps. But for absolute beginners who are learning about Angular, it's one less thing to learn about and that's a good thing. Great, with that out of the way, how do we actually create standalone components? Now that is simple. We just use the standalone flag, which the Angular CLI provides. For example, let's create a component called ngg component and let's create it in a components folder. Let's, for example, call it an item list. It will be an items list and we will use a standalone flag. Great, a new component was created and you'll notice that it was not added to the declarations of the app module. And let's go in our new component and we are going to see the first thing is that the standalone flag has been true here. This is exactly what you can do if you want to convert an existing component to standalone. This tells Angular that this is a standalone component and doesn't need to be in a module. Now, you can also remove the main app module entirely by using bootstrap application. So let's go in your app module or rather in your main.ts and instead of this bootstrap module, we can remove all of this and we can do bootstrap application. And here we can give our app component instead of the app module. Okay, and we can remove all of our unused imports. Now we can safely remove our app module here and we don't need our app module at all. And let's also go in our app component and make it as a standalone component. Great. So now when we look at our folder structure, we don't have any ng modules at all. Okay, so now that you have added your standalone component, which was the items list component, there is a problem. Now where do you specify its dependencies? Earlier you did this in the ng module, remember? Now it's simple. You just add it to your imports array here instead of the ng module. So you can see that you already have a common module which contains ng if, ng for and other basic angular directives. Adding this imports in the component itself means that you don't have to context switch to other ng modules and you can easily add or remove dependencies while you are changing code in your component. This is much simpler than going into ng modules. Okay, so let's try adding a new dependency here and we want to add a material list to this items list component. Now to do that first we are going to add the angular material library to our project. Great. Now if we for example go in our uh, template file here and we try to add mat list which we want it's going to give an error that okay it's not a known element that is because we haven't imported it in our components yet in our dependencies so now instead of going into the ng module which we would have done earlier we are just going to add a mat list module here and before that just import the same in angular material list great and now we can see that we don't get any error here that means th we can use the mat list in our component okay so let's just create a simple array of items here and we are going to say item 1, item 2 and item 3 and then we are going to go back into this and we are going to get inside of this and we are going to create a mat list item and loop through the items that we created, item of items. Great, let's create a P and with a mat line directive here and let's add the item here or rather this would be h1 and then we'll add a p this would be a mat line as well this would be just a description of the item okay so here is our mat list so our items list component is complete but in order to show it in our uh, app we need to add it to the app component as well now to add it to the app component we need to import this in our app component as well and here we are going to do items list component now since it's a standalone component we can import the component itself otherwise previously we always had to import a module which contained the component okay so now we can use our 
app items list component here okay now i think we are done enough work and we can now test it out let's test this out great so you can see uh, we have our uh, material list described and uh, displayed here now we can do any changes here but whatever changes that we do we only need to go in our component and that's the beauty of standalone component now if you look at our folder structure now and uh, if you look at the folder structure we don't have any ng modules we only have our after component and we have our components as well it's simpler we have less code files and to change a component we only need to look into the component itself and make the changes there so for example if you want to import a button to our items list we can simply go in our items list and we uh, since we need a button we need to add a mat button here or a button and we need to say okay i need a mat raised button but to do that we need to import a button module here as well to do that we need to import here so we're going to do angular material button and we can do mat button module here and then we can use this mat raised button here as well so we can say click it okay let's test this out and we can see we already have the button here so whatever changes that we need to make in our item that all of the dependencies are listed here and we can uh, by a look at it tell that okay this component needs these of modules or it needs these components so overall there is less confusion now i hope you found this as a good introduction to the concept of standalone components of course with anything new it might take a bit of time to get used to but i feel it is the correct uh, direction for angular's future now from angular version 15 standalone components will be going into stable mode so you can use it in production from then on uh, at this point it is developer preview so you can wait a bit more now till next time hope you have a nice day please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and happy coding